Uh, welcome everybody to the City Council Select Committee to Study Barriers to Serving on City Boards and Commission. Today is March 26, Sunday, March 26, 1206. Um, we're gonna call, we're gonna do roll call. Jamila? Here. Garrick? Here. When? Here. Javier? Here. And Cynthia is absent. We knew that Cynthia was not able to make it today. Excellent. So we are opening the meeting. Um, this meeting is being recorded in Zoom. Uh, Council, uh, Council President Nash, yes, I see your hand. Yeah, I, I recommend starting the transcript if it hasn't been started. Uh, I don't know if it has. I, I, I think that, I mean, I'm not sure. Uh, yes. You have enabled closed captioning. Yeah, okay. cool. and transcript, it's on, right. Okay, excellent. I just want to make sure because Laura's not here and that's that was going to be her means of tracking what, what occurred. All right. Excellent, thanks. Thank you. Uh, Jim. Uh, Excellent. So this meeting is being recorded, and this meeting is specifically about public comment. The idea is for uh, for the members of this uh, committee to hear from community members in relationship to accessibility experiences and ways to improve transparency and processes around uh, the appoint uh, the appointment of members to, to different boards and commissions within the city of Northampton. Each person is going to have four minutes to uh, to speak up. Because of the number that we have right now, if somebody after those four minutes feels that they have something left to say, they can queue up again and, and, and raise their hand again, and they will call after, back again when everybody, we have gone full circle. So I would invite the members of the public to use uh, either the raise hand feature, which is on the bottom of the screen. If you go to reactions, there's a face and a plus sign. You click there, the raise hand feature is there. If not, feel free to turn on your camera and raise your hand uh, so I can call on you. Um, the comments are going to be so the, the meeting it's in, and this is a clarification for the members of the select committee uh the members are not uh, should not either answer or uh interject this is for the public to talk to us we're not answering questions we're not making comments um we're taking notes and we're listening um and for the public so far, uh, we deploy a, a community-wide survey with people who have either uh, applied to different committees and boards and being selected to serve, people who have sent their applications when they were being called. We, are, we have already 150 answers to the survey that if you go back uh, to the archives of the city, you are gonna see uh, the recordings of our meetings where we go thoroughly through the sort of the analysis of the survey. So um, if pe people who are interested to do public speaking, if they can use the raise hand so I can call them, the raise hand feature of just raise their hand, I will call and in the order that it shows Zoom. Um, and when you're talking, please uh, say your full name and 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 the you, if you're really comfortable, address is fine. If not, you can say the word where you're you're zooming from. Uh, Claudia Lefko. Hi, hi, Claudia Lefko, Forty Valley Street. Um, I'm calling. Obviously, I'm zooming in because this is an issue that has concerned me a great deal. I've lived in the city since 1976. We moved to Northampton because it's a small town, basically, and it, it seemed an easy place to get involved in things. We we came from Cambridge, which was a big city where it was very difficult to get to be heard. 
And so I have been an activist since the day probably we arrived. Um, I was on the school committee uh, for six years, serving at large from 19, I think it was like 87 to 91 or 86 to 91, I can't remember. And that term, that, that determination or whatever, I'm sorry, I, I get very anxious talking on these Zoom calls. It's better per face to face. But I decided to run for the school committee or I was put forward as a, to run for the school committee out of a parent organization called Advocates for Children's Education, which we had people in all the elementary schools and the junior high in the city who were advocating to improve education. And we were having some great success. We were interacting with teachers, the superintendent and so forth. And so I was put forward as a candidate to serve at large and I served three terms. In those days, it seemed very um, possible to influence city government and um, out of the school out of the my work on the school committee we formed a child care committee we were instrumental in getting a daycare set up at the, the public but at the uh, pvta bus garage and so forth so my expectation that i could get involved in the city and make a difference was met it was really very in a very exciting time but I think as time has gone on, it's been harder and harder for people to get involved and to feel that it means anything. And I'll just give you one example. At one point, there was a great committee formed around the future of arts in the city. We worked for a year. There were probably 30 people from all aspects of arts and housing, whatever, throughout the city. And at the end, you know, the recommendations aren't accepted. So. I, so committees were being formed, people were given mandates, and in the end, after all the work is done, the city council would not accept the recommendations. Not just on committees like that that were set up by the city council, but informal organizations that where people got together, they tried to do something within the community, and the effort was rejected. And I'll just give you a two examples in my neighborhood. We got we had city view apartments built in this small neighborhood and we got traffic calming money to as you know as part of the deal. When we tried to uh, we had a committee in the neighborhood, it met for two or three years. We did all this research on how much traffic was specifically coming through the neighborhood. We made all these recommendations, and every time we made a recommendation, it was not accepted at the city. One of the things we wanted to do was paint crosswalks in our neighborhood. And the city told us that would be impossible. And of course, as everybody knows, downtown, we have painted sidewalks on Main Street in front of Thorns. So little by little, one gets the feeling that, okay, maybe you know nobody's listening to you or people have their own ideas and whatever your idea is, it's going out the door. Uh, I had one other example. Um, of the um okay about about people not listening so just i know now that i have four minutes i don't see the clock running so tell me if i'm running over but so 30 more, people, 30 people more seconds yeah to what's that 30 more seconds okay so this the second thing i wanted to say that is over the years, as, as I'm still an activist, and on some level maybe being heard less and less, although I'm speaking out, but I'm not getting much reaction to it, um, that people are literally getting sick from activism. We went. To, I went to a meeting where a man came specifically to the meeting to say he would not join the meeting in this activity we are engaged in because he had gotten physically sick from trying to negotiate with the city about something that had to do with his property. It's that and it's two other people who literally say, I tried to do X and I got sick. I ended up in the emergency room. I had a stroke. I'm not doing this anymore. So my message, I mean, it's not that clear, but I think a lot of times people think one of the barriers is, oh, there's too many small children oh, there's this, there's that. But I think one of the barriers that the committee should consider is how open city government is to the input from people who are assigned to tasks, because I feel like that's one of the problems. So sorry to go on so long. Thanks.
Thank you so much, Claudia. Um, Pill, uh, pl pl please <laughs> feel free uh, to get in touch with any of us to, to talk more about this. I think it's important. Um, and I, I appreciate uh, your public comment. Um, I'm looking for more of another hand, another person that would want to do public comment. I see around one, two, three, four, five, six, around eight people. Anybody else that's in line for public comment? Uh, excellent. Uh, C. Mason Maroon. <laughs> if you want to state your name, if you feel comfortable with your address or just the word from where you're submitting to. And you're muted. So I'm going to ask, I'm going to. I'm asking you in the system to unmute you. Sorry. There you are. Thank you so okay. much. Okay. You hear me now? All right. Um, I'm on the Conservation Commission. Uh, my name is Mason Marin. Um, actually, we've, we've put the opposite problem. We, we, we don't have, um, I never had a problem getting on, on the commission. Uh, most commissions or boards have associate positions where you can't vote, but you can end the meetings and participate in discussions and so on. And that's how I get on the uh, Conservation Commission um, 47 years ago. So I've been through about six mayors. Um, the uh, city council has always been very cooperative when we've done land purchases and um, some people I guess are, are probably intimidated by the kind of experience they need to get on a commissioner or board and um, that that's not a problem with the conservation commission we have a good mixture of uh, people who are some are not associated with conservation at all, but uh, are maybe served on a corporate structure or something like that. But, um, the I, I think the city has has kind of made it easy already to get on commissions. Um, most most cities have a problem getting people on commissions, not because of the, the way they have to go. You know any out any uh, special requirements to get onto a board, but um, a lot of a lot of cities are having trouble just getting people to populate the boards and the. And I'm not sure whether that's just lack of interest or or what. Um, maybe people not familiar with what process these boards and commissions do. Conservation Commission, of course, we look out for wetland interests. Um, and actually, the uh, <laughs> one of the factors in the Conservation Commission was early on problems with DPWs because they got more involved in wetlands than most other uh, organizations coming through the uh, city. And we have since worked out. Um, understandings with the DW. They've got generic orders of conditions that they can put in place on, on a lot of their projects. And uh, I think there's a good rapport now with the DW and the commissions. In the old days, it was the DW more or less the, the enemy of the Conservation Commission. Things have certainly worked out best with that or but um, I I have really never seen a, a, a problem getting on the conservation. Um, you know, we're we're I think we're a member short now. We're looking for other members, uh, somebody else to come forward. But I think some some people are intimidated that well, geez, you have to be a biologist or. Uh, you know, be an expert in wildlife conservation or something, get on the board. Don't. Um, just just bring experience 
whatever particular thing you were involved with, bring that to the commission. You know, we're finding out, okay, a guy that was the chairman of a finance committee or something um, actually comes into the commission and, and works out and has expertise in a section that maybe other members don't. But uh, I, I have uh, not seen a real problem as far as um, getting members, at least not through the process of getting members. I have a subcommittee where you, every, one, every three years I get a uh, little uh, paper from the uh, subcommittee from the city council on whether I want to continue on with the commission. And Two more seconds. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Mason. Thanks for coming and giving public testimony. I saw a couple of people coming in. So welcome everybody. This is being recorded. Uh, hold on, my timer is going on. Uh, this is being recorded for the people just are coming right now. This is being recorded. Um, we are, we're giving four minutes for each person to be able to talk. We sometimes go over that time. People that after that they feel that they have something else to say, they can sort of queue up again after we go after all the people that are already present. Um, this is a listening session, so the members of the select committee are not answering questions or not making comments. Uh, Council of Perry. I, I just wanted to state that if anyone felt like they, they couldn't get their full story out through this listening session in the four minutes, you can also feel free to send an email uh, to myself or some of the other uh, select committee members if you, if you have more of a story to tell. Thanks, Derek. Um, George. Good afternoon, everybody. George Kohout. I live down on State Street. Um, I uh, currently serve on the planning board. I've also put some time into the Affordable Housing Commission and uh, the Community Preservation Commission, too. So I've had a little range of experience with uh, the way folks are nominated to the boards or at times elected to the boards. Um, I'm also on, on a couple of other nonprofit boards. And overall, I know how difficult it is to, to recruit people from a range of backgrounds to all of the boards. I think um, the planning board, I'll, I'll speak to that first. Um, <clears throat> I think over time, the mayors have tried to balance the board with a variety of opinions and backgrounds. So it's not to reflect just one kind of demographic, um, more so in terms of experience and perhaps their professional background than anything else. Um, I, I, and I also want to say I appreciate what this um, work group has done in terms of reaching out um, for input from people who serve on the boards, who have tried to serve on the boards. And I, and I look forward to seeing the the summary of the interviews or the summary of the uh, reports, the uh, questionnaires that went out, I think that'll be very revealing. I know I answered that myself and at the risk of duplicating that, I'll just mention some of the things I put into that survey. Um, one is I think that um, I've known from personal experience, people I've said have asked George, how do I get on these boards? What do I do? I said, well, there's an application on the website. Go to the website, download it. If you can't do that, you can go to City Hall and get an application and fill it out in hand and submit it. Um, too often I've heard that then it just kind of gets lost into this black hole, unfortunately, at City Hall. Nobody reaches out to them to say, thank you. We received your application. Someone will be talking to you. Um, it just doesn't seem to, to garner any attention, which is off-putting, off I think, for somebody who's trying for the first time. <clears throat> so that's tough. I know also that uh, many of the boards that I serve on, um, it's often older people who are retired or their children are grown up, or it's younger people who don't have families. Too often the boards meet at times, which is very difficult for children with family. When I was first on the planning board, I had young boys in high school 
And it was tricky to meet at that time of night. We didn't have Zoom where we could stay at home. Everything was person to person. So um, I know often the, the solution to that is provide daycare, which of course isn't an easy solution because of licensing and staffing possibilities. People serving on boards can't bring their children to meetings. It's very difficult. Um, but I think that's an impediment for sure if we're looking for a range of people to serve on the boards. Um, I think now as we get more technology dependent, I think some of the <clears throat> technology for some folks can be an impediment, um, especially if you're asking a lot of folks to appear on Zoom. We have to do a lot of reading and downloading of applications and background on our computer. So you need to have a good computer at home. You need to have a good printer. Um, often that can be an impediment to really engaging in a meeting. Um, let me see, I'm throwing out all these challenges, unfortunately, but um, it is true that uh, um, it's difficult for people who aren't represented on the board, people who live in large apartment complexes, people who are younger, to really access it the same way as people who come from these white collar jobs. Um, I'm not speaking for all the committees, of course, throughout the city, but the ones I'm familiar with. Um, I think if we could offer an, a monetary incentive at times, a stipend to people uh, who serve on a committee for the amount of <clears throat> time they send out a meeting or perhaps the amount of time they have to do in researching different articles that might help with some people. Um, I don't think anybody's going to join a board because they're going to make uh, $15 an hour or so. They can spend their time better elsewhere. But I think it might be just enough to get someone um, to, to think about joining a board. Um, I think another thing that might be encouraged when someone puts in an application, again, as I mentioned, if somebody could reach out to them um, and talk to them about the position, that would be helpful. Uh, I, I offered that perhaps that could be the ward counselor um, or some member of the board that they're applying to. We've talked about that on a planning board and many members said, yes, they'd be willing to talk to people who are interested. Mason brought up a good point about associate members. I'm not sure if that's true for every board that you could come to meetings, not be a voting meeting, but a voting member, but you can see what's going on. That might also be helpful. Um, and yeah, I just, know, I just know we need to do a better job in getting more representation from all the walks of our life, of uh, populations here in Northampton. Um, and this is a great start. So again, I appreciate it very much. And I hope to see your summary um, when it comes out. So thank you very much for your time today on, on a gorgeous Sunday. Adios. Thank you so much, George. Good to see you. Um, for people who are coming in, um, and I totally forgot to say, if you're on the phone, uh, if you dial asterisk nine, you're gonna be able to use the raise hand feature. Uh, if that's not an option, feel free to unmute yourself and put yourself in the queue so that I can call on you. Um, so we're going to move to the to the next person who raises hand. I saw that some people, there you are. So the next person is going to be Joella uh, Turban. Hi, everybody. I'm uh, Joella, also known as Jada. And forgive me, I have a bad hair day, so I don't want to scare you guys. So um, I'll take the video off. Um, I appreciate the two speakers who had spoken, or was it th two or three, and they all said some things that are very important. I think that if you do have a group or committee that you are lacking people, um, I just want to think about it because the first pe person who spoke, I was like, I don't even know what that is. I've never even heard what it is. <laughs> so how are you outreaching to people? Are you going into communities? Are you going into public housing? Are you going into the schools? Are you saying, we got this great thing going on and maybe we can get some young folks, they can come do an intern, they could come shadow me. I'm just wondering what you're saying because it's almost like, is it a, a power of attraction other than promotion? <laughs> you may need a little bit of both. And I can say, um, I'm on two, uh, well, I'm on several committees. I. Uh, Part of me don't even want to say all the committees I was on, but I think for me, and I have to say this, I have lived in Northampton for many years. I went to school and I was thought Northampton, but up until about what three, four years ago, I never got involved in Northampton business because I'm just going to tell you, 
and I don't know who you are. I hope you don't hurt your feelings. Northampton is a progressive town uh, in theory, <laughs> in practice. Uh, no, so I taught at I taught in Springfield. I I joined the Y in Holyoke. I mean, I just felt like I lived here because in relative, you know, I'm used to, you know, at one time I was seeing Francis Crow protesting. I was like, good, I'll go over and say, yeah, yeah, rah, rah, stop the war. But I never peeped, there was not a concerted effort to um to attract and to befriend and to reach out. However, after, uh, I, I know this because it's a day after inauguration. I mean, I heard the Rocky theme song in the back of me. And some of the groups that I, some of the places that I ventured to, uh, for example, I would go to the food pantry. I have never seen in this town until then, that group of board of directors and staff reached out in ways that are, I think, unprecedented here in this town. During the time when the world was shut down, they looked at themselves and say, look, we're mainly white, any of us are lesbian. We really need to do something. I think the whole thing about George Floyd really impacted people. And they had to close down because of the whole pandemic. And I've never seen anyone in truthfulness introspectively look at themselves and say, what do we need to do? And from that, I think I was in line and someone like nervously asked if I would be a part. And I was like, yes. I said, yes, they didn't hear me say yes. They were still explaining. Well, you know, I know it's where, and what I said, I said, yes, because <laughs> Kamala Harris said people of color, answer the call, get involved. And I was doing that. And they did some pretty amazing things. They found some funding. Uh, I don't know exactly how it is. You have to explain. They give a little visa card for people because just as somebody said, they need to get people here, babysit, all that. And they really worked through that. Was it perfect? No, we're still working on stuff. But that was the first group that I really felt like, well, the services was great, but then being on part of the committee. And then I, I really thought, oh God, am I going to be the only person of color? <laughs> I'm glad I'm not. And they really put a concern. So that was, I think that was a model that I hope other people follow. Secondly, I joined two other boards um, that I'm very passionate about. And supposedly they had a fee. I don't ever think I ever got paid what it was supposed to be. And I don't even know what it is. One, I've been on a year and haven't got a dime. And I spent a lot of time in those meetings, after those meetings, going to events, and I haven't got a dime. And I think, do people think I'm made of money? Maybe I'm from Texas. They really think I'm an oil billionaire. And so I go to these things. And I think in one group I'm with, at least 25 hours a week I put into it. And I don't know what I get paid. I think. 400 one year and maybe 700 the next year. So I think sometimes when I'm totally exhausted and I think I would rather be working three jobs because I have where you're tired and exhausted instead of working. I appreciate all the work that I'm doing and I see the fruits of my labor, but I'm just saying who in my socioeconomic background gonna sit here and work like a crazy person. I have no life. And I admitted that, I admit to that and acknowledge it, and I'm uh, committed. But one of the things, and I think with this group, I'm trying to figure it out, is that first I thought, oh, I'm not the only one in the group and we're working together, but that doesn't mean I have any power, that I'm respected, in particular in one group, that uh, I'm going into people who know each other. They hang out, oh, how was the orchestra this weekend? And then the rest of us, they said, well, you can't talk to each other because you'll be uh, breaking open meeting laws. But they hanging out and even probably voting to keep things uh, the way they are. So it's like, I feel like I'm a colorful addendum. And so that's not what I wanted to start for, but that's a very important organization. And I think, why am I doing it? And I have to keep like reassuring myself, keep going, keep going. But I wish there was some mentor, there was some legal help. There was some uh, uh, probably mentoring <laughs> from someone outside of the group to see how things going on. I think we need a whole lot. And if we're talking about it, okay, that's fine. That's good. Uh, are we doing something about it? Oh, that would be better. So um, anyway, you should never give me a chance to talk and ask and ask me what I think, because I'm going to tell you. Have a good day, y'all. Thank you so much, Joella. It's always good to hear you. <laughs> um, excellent. So um, we're going to move. Uh, to the next person. Mm, I'm gonna wait for if there's anybody. Devin, Devin Bruce. 
You're muted. There you are. There we go. Um, hi, um, I am currently serving on the Transportation and Parking Commission, and I have been previously on that commission for some years. I got off and my seat was not filled for a period of time. And I would say that the reason I got back on was literally because someone at DPW said, we need your seat filled. And so that's my first suggestion is that many committees work in conjunction with or associated with uh, departments of the city. And I think those departments know the people that they interact with. And I, I, I uh, very much appreciate what Joelle said about the network of people being um, self-serving in some ways. And, and my suggestion, uh, unfortunately, parallels that because I think the departments can find people to serve on committees. Um, and, but I don't want that to be limiting to branch out to find different people. I think the departments know a range of people. Um, so I just cite that as one example about how seats do get filled. Um, I echo what George said about not getting any feedback. So I put in my application uh, based on a conversation, and it was a long period of time before I had any idea what happened to it. So there does need to be um, a feedback loop that says, yes, we got your application. It's going over to this department head or this uh, board chair, and we'll be back in touch with you. And you can expect to have to fill out a uh, form for uh, the clerk in order to serve on the committee. So that sort of conversation about expectation, I think, would be very useful. Um, and last, um, I kind of, uh, I haven't looked in a while, but I think the application for serving on a committee is kind of buried in the website. I'd like to see it, you know, right up front. I want, I mean, there are, there are hundreds of seats that need to be filled by citizens who are willing to put in their time. So I think that ought to be a button right up front. And last, um, I ended up in the beginning getting on transportation and parking because I came from work in that area. And I felt like I owed it to the city to, to sit on a seat and do some work because I had some background in it. Um, I think stories from people who have had a good experience serving on committees um, would be helpful. I, you know, a, a good story goes a long way. And I, I think Mason's example of being on the Conservation Commission and that it works and they bring in new people. You'd like to have those stories communicated because it, it can be, uh, people don't know what it's going to be like to be on a committee. Um, as, as George said, I served on planning board for years and you know, it's a it's a very important job, but it's also a job where you get fussed at a lot. I mean, people don't come to the planning board to say, I really like what you're doing, you know. And so, you know, that unknowing, not knowing what to expect when you get on a committee could uh, could be helped with outreach from the committee itself or with some stories to um, illustrate some positive aspects of having been involved with the city. Thanks. Thank you so much. Um, Devin, you still have a minute if you want to use it. Um, <laughs> excellent. Thank you so much. Well, actually, I, I do. Um, I'm, I'm here because I'm a trustee, and I wanted to um, let you know that I will be reporting back to them. They actually asked that someone from Forbes Library attend the meeting. I, I might have done so anyway, but um, there is more interest, I think, in what you're doing than you may experience from the number of people that showed up today. Thank you so much, Devin. Uh, feel free to either get in touch with, with me as the chair or vice chair Gore uh, with any kind of, so if you guys want any meeting. Excellent. We're going to move forward. Erin. Uh, Hi, how are you? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So I happen to be a senior, 71 years old, who was born and raised in the city. And I can tell you, we are underrepresented in this city. I have applied for the Senior Center Advisory Committee, 
I will never, ever get on there. Even though I have an associate's degree in recreation leadership and a bachelor's in business administration. And I will let you know, I have filed one discrimination suit against the city and I'm about to do another one because the seniors in the city are being abused by the city council and the mayor. You provide no handicap transportation and unlike every other city in town, we have to pay for it. And all our residents think we get it for free. We have taxis, caravans that you can't get in and you can't get out of if you have osteoarthritis. And I know that for a fact, because what they were going to do was give me a stool to get out. No handles, no way to get out of there safe. And not one of you cares. This is what the seniors have gone through since the beginning of COVID, when we were hung up on by Ben in Meredith O'Leary's office. And when we complained, we were told it did not happen. This is what we put up with since 2020. And not one of you cares about that. You think we're all having a great old time. Well, guess what? We don't even have housing in the city of Northampton for those of us who were born here, because it goes to everybody from Springfield and Holyoke and Chicopee. And I know that for a fact, because my mother-in-law moved from Chicopee and she lives in housing, but I, who was born and raised here, I can't get in. So you guys need to start doing your job and you start need to start appointing people who were born here that know the history, who are qualified for the boards that you all keep ignoring. So this is great committee. Hope you do something finally, but I found all you do is talk, 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 and you don't do anything. So have a nice day. Thank you so much, Erin. We're gonna move forward. Um, and I still see a couple of people that haven't talked um, before moving to the to queue up again. Um, excellent. So I'm gonna I'm gonna sort of we're gonna move it sort of full circle. If somebody who hasn't talked uh, is interested to talk, just feel free to raise your hand. The raise hand feature is on the bottom of the screen in the section reactions with the happy face and the plus sign. Uh, if you cannot use that, just feel free to, uh, excellent. Uh, Edgardo. Hello all, uh, my name is Edgardo Cancel. Um, I used to go by Edgar. Um, I too am having a bad hair day, so I will not. Uh, no, I'm just joking. I'm actually just uh, munching on stuff here, and I don't want to be seen uh, eating um, on uh, online here. But um, I do serve on the uh, Northampton Housing Partnership, um, as well as on the um, Northampton Housing Authority Board. Um, I've always been interested in uh, uh, anything related with housing, homelessness. Um, and improvement of uh, quality of life uh, for the residents here. Um, I was um, uh, born and raised in Puerto Rico until I was 12 years old. Um, I've been here in Northampton since uh, 1989. I went to high school at Northampton High School and I have uh, raised uh, my children here in Northampton as well. Um, I have a 27 year old daughter and a 19 year old son. Uh, they're both out of the home now um, and um, they have had a, a great experience growing up here as, as I did. Um, I grew up in public housing at, in foreign sites um, and I uh, surely uh, lived the uh, village ex experience. Um, I understand the village concept because I lived it um, and I had a great childhood and uh, teenage years uh, living in Florence Heights. Um, at the time I felt uh, well, looking at it now, um, I see that I was, um, we really had a lot more uh, support and involvement from the community at large. Um, and although there were times where we felt isolated all the way up in um, 
uh, and pulling site sort of away from everything uh, in town. Um, our, uh, our neighbors, um, our parents um, uh, organized themselves. We had a, a tenant association in Northampton at, at Florence Sites. And we did excellent work collaborating with the housing authority uh, and the director at the time uh, to really improve the quality of life for, uh, for the residents at Florence Heights. Um, it's because my parents and, uh, and my friend's parents were so involved that uh, ever since I was a teenager, I was involved in um, anything uh, housing related in Northampton. Uh, as a 19 year old, I served on, on the board of uh, uh, Valley CDC and we did, I was involved in several um, just really cool projects. Uh, one of which was completely remodeling and re um, uh, building the foundation at that building on, uh, on South Street, right behind the Academy of Music. Uh, I was involved in that project and also the beginning stages of creating uh, Village Hill. Um, and um, how I got on, on the housing partnership was actually quite difficult to get on there. Um, I had applied, uh, never received any response. This was about four or five years ago. Um, and um, I actually had to reach out to the mayor at the time and ask how, how come I hadn't gotten a response or anything. And I knew there was um, uh, positions available on the housing partnership um, and I was not getting a call. Um, so I kind of gave the mayor a nudge at which time uh, he did uh, have somebody call me back and um, and I went through the process of getting uh, appointed to the housing partnership. Um, and so I'm actually mostly here today to observe, listen, um, and, and in hopes that the process has gotten easier for folks uh, trying to get into uh, uh, and serve on boards uh, now. Um, and um, I, I wanna uh, be able to learn to see how I can help others um, uh, bring their voice uh, and their civic duty to, uh, uh, to the city. As somebody mentioned, um, there is a lot of uh, uh, positions available uh, for serving on different boards. And I think uh, we could really do so much better job advertising for these positions and letting folks know that we're interested in their involvement. Uh, so I'd be willing to, uh, for some more of the follow-up work uh, that this committee is doing, uh, which by the way, I'm really, really grateful that you all are doing this and have uh, put in so much time and effort into figuring this, this out. Uh, it's really commendable and I'm, I'm really grateful to y'all for, uh, for doing this. And so um, I would be um, um, really willing to be involved in any follow-up work to this. Um, uh, whether it's uh, reaching out to folks. Um, I am very involved in, uh, in public housing in the city. So reaching out to folks that live in public housing uh, would be something that would be very easy for me to do. Uh, uh, so just reach out. Um, and uh, uh, again, I'm really uh, happy about the work that you're all doing. And I, I'd be um, uh, really excited to uh, be part of uh, creating the solutions um, that you all are looking for. So thank you. Thank you so much, Edgardo. Um, before going back into the sort of the queue up, is there anybody else who hasn't spoken, who hasn't uh, be part of the public speaking that would like to be part of? Um, if you're from your phone to be able to use the race and feature, it's asterisk and nine. Um, if you if if that gets too complicated, feel free to un unmute yourself and uh, sort of just just say that you you want to do public speaking. Um, we're gonna go to you, Claudia, right now. Claudia, let's go. And if somebody who hasn't is pick is pick up yet uh, wants to do it, just feel free after Claudia to raise your hand or to unmute yourself. Claudia, hi. Uh, are you quitting at one o'clock? Uh, no, no, not necessarily. We're gonna we're gonna keep going at least at, until we have gone through everybody. Okay, and, great. So 
So, I mean, the conversation is really interesting. And I think uh, it's too bad that more people haven't zoomed in. I think it's, you know, I don't know how people found out about this. I mean, Jim Nash who's my city councilor. He sent out a notice. Some people who I forwarded it to said 12 on Sunday is not a very good time for people to join. But I just wanna make um, a few comments about because I think this is, for me, a bigger conversation about, you know, about democracy in the city and how, what the culture of the city is. And so I appreciate what everybody's been saying, especially like Edgardo, um, this idea that his parents were active, that he becomes active, hopefully his children are active, that I think by participating in the city in commissions or elected positions or whatever, being active in the life that you're living, like I got involved in Bridge Street School, and my kids see that I'm working to improve the educate their education. They see that this is an important part of of being part of a community. So I don't I don't know how we can address this, but I think it's a bigger conversation that needs to be had because you hear that people are frustrated. People need people on commissions and people who want to join commissions feel like they can't join commissions. And then there are those of us who have been on commissions who feel like the city actually doesn't listen to, to the outcome of them. So I think it's a really multifaceted problem and it's great you're 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 confronting this i personally didn't even know such a committee existed maybe the gazette could cover it or you could do a piece on on public radio or something but you know use uh, xrj use our local radio station somehow this conversation i think is really critical so i'm glad you've done it i'm glad you've heard people out and I'm interested to see the outcome. I would encourage you to have a public listening session where actually people could sit together and speak to each other because I think Zoom for, for me and maybe others is not that easy. So thanks, I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Claudia. Do we have anybody else that is interested in either, you know, having us second time uh, of a statement or somebody who hasn't uh, been part of the, of the public speaking yet. Um, Edgardo, Uh, yeah, well, thanks. Um, I, I just saw that um, I forgot to mention about my experience on serving on, on the two boards that I am a uh, part of. And so I want to touch up on that a little bit um, because there's a, that's a pretty big contrast uh, between uh, my experience on one board and my experience on another. For instance, um, being on the housing partnership has been um, has been really good. I really enjoy serving with the folks that are part of that group. Um, and I have always felt uh, heard and valued, uh, and not only heard and valued, but um, also um, whenever I bring things up to this committee, um, they really listen. Um, and we try to do uh, whatever we can to um, uh, to look for solutions uh, to whatever matter I might bring up. For instance, uh, uh, one year um, I, I brought up to the, the partnership that, you know, I would like more support around building a playground in Hampshire Heights um, because I felt like there's no reason why our public housing kids shouldn't have a safe place to play uh, when there are so many resources here in our city. There's so many, um, uh, there is, there's, there's definitely enough funding to create uh, a better quality of life for our residents. And so, you know, um, and I had heard um, excuses before, I, like, you know, oh, there's a, there's, a, there's a playground across the street at Jackson Street. Um, and so they can use that, but that's, that, I wasn't happy with that at all because um, logistically, even though it's a diagonally across the street, it, it is uh, quite difficult for parents to get uh, their kids uh, over to the school to play on that playground versus like they're in the backyard playing. And so 
Uh, when I brought this up to the partnership, not only they heard me, but uh, they supported me 100% in my desire to build this, this, um, this playground. And then um, city council rallied around me and then the community rallied around me. And then uh, the Northampton Housing Authority, of course, the owners of the property, um, they were excited uh, about um, uh, building uh, the play playground. And I, and I, in that, through that entire process, I felt like, oh man, this is how communities should really behave. This is great. So we, we went and we applied for CPA funding. The CPA approved the grant. Uh, and then the, the city uh, kicked in another $150,000 from city BG funding. It was such a participatory uh, process that it left me just feeling so grateful to live in the city, to uh, to be part of, uh, of such a group. Um, so, you know, public, I want to thank uh, the uh, the uh, Peg, uh, who was a, the staff member at the time and, and working at the um, in, in the planning department, um, who really saw the vision and, and really helped move forward. But also everyone else who participated um, uh, uh, in that process. That's just one example, and, and and the benefits that came out of that. I mean, obviously the residents, the the the, the, the kids in, in Hampshire Heights now have a beautiful playground. Uh, to play in uh, right next to a community garden, which I also had a lot of support from the community at large uh, in order uh, to help build. Um, and now my experience serving on the Northampton Housing Authority Board hasn't been as you know uh, accomplishing or as um, as exciting as it is uh, to serve on the housing partnership. Um, I have had many hurdles. Um, I don't always feel value. I don't always feel heard. And actually, sometimes I even feel attacked. Uh, so, you know, these are things that that um, uh, for folks coming in, um, you know, it could be difficult, you know, to serve. I've seen several members quit uh, from the board of the Housing Authority because of their um, uh, disappointments in how uh, the relationship is is or was at the time with with the with the board and the staff, and so I feel that at the housing authority we still have a lot of room to improve, um, and I am working hard to uh, try and and uh, and improve uh, what we do on, on, on as as board members of that group, um, and we are seeing some improvements lately. So I'm looking forward uh, for more and more. Um, input from residents of public housing so that we can improve the quality of, of life um, because it is possible. I lived it. I lived the village concept. I, I lived being supported by my media community and the mayor and the housing authority and uh, everyone involved. And so I know it's possible. Um, and that's not what our children in public housing are experiencing today, unfortunately. So uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Edgardo. Do we have anybody else that either has not participated or would like to participate one more time? Mason. And you're muted. I just asked, send you a request for unmute. There you go. Um, I got on the Conservation Commission. I didn't even know there was one until, uh, well, as former member of the city council. I don't think he was a member at the time, but uh, he came uh, over to my house and saw a crack in the cellar, and the planning board was um, looking at a, a continuation of the development that I'm living in in Florence. Uh, and another street, and he was telling the planning board problems on the street that was already there, which was the one I was on. Um, but when I got on the on the uh, conservation commission, I sent in a resume to the chairman of the commission, and got on as an associate member. And then a couple of months later, one of the members um, hours changed at work and I was a voting member then. And uh, 
I have been on that uh, that committee ever since. Um, this July will be 47 years. And I, it, I found that this is one of the first com uh, communities that I've ever lived in that I really wanted to give something back to the uh, community because I, it's such a great place to be. In. <clears throat> My experiences on the board, uh, we now have our own city um, wetlands ordinance besides the state wetlands protection that we have jurisdiction over. And it's, it's just a great experience. Um, I'm, uh, I'm shooting for 50 years. After that, someone else could be a member. But it's been a pleasure to serve on this, on this committee. And uh, I don't think I'd ever give that, uh, that experience up. Like I say, I, I submitted my resume that I don't think if the city council even had a sign up sheet or application uh, form to fill out. Um, it was, uh, I guess, a process where you just let somebody know in, in, in the uh, city council or you let the mayor know. In fact, the, uh, <laughs> I was appointed by Mayor David Kramer. And I was kind of hoping Narcowitz would keep on going and I could start with a David and end with one, but um, it's, it's been nice. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to serve on this, on this, on this committee. That's all I got to say. Thank you so much. Oh, one uh, thing I was, I was also a, uh, um, sat down and with a, group of people and came up with the uh, Community Preservation uh, Association. I, I was instrumental with a group of people in establishing the rules and regulations. And I was, I served on the uh, Community Preservation Commission for the uh, first five years. Of Thank you. Thanks, Mason. Um, is anybody else who has not yet participated? Um, so, and is there anybody else who has participated who would like to go again? Joella, I saw your hand. Yes, if I may be permitted. Uh, I really think this has been a very good meeting and I do appreciate everyone sharing. And as I'm looking to, listening to, um, uh, Mr. Consell speak about a time where he grew up. I didn't, I never in my whole life had public housing until I was an adult. So I didn't realize how wonderful an environment it was. I haven't particularly experienced um, that here in public housing. I was a head resident at Mount Holyoke College and it's a different um, economic, socioeconomic uh, factor there. And there was a sense of community when I worked there. I saw people doing some of the things in a different way that made people feel like you are important, you're a part of us and you value. And I wish that we had that in our public housing. I was raised by my grandmother, but uh, never in a public housing setting up until here. Cause I, I don't know, maybe cause I just went to Europe and Switzerland and all my friends in college all lived in public housing. It was a normal thing, but it wasn't, uh, they were valued nevertheless. Uh, so I just also wanted to say that I, as I mentioned, I, I have had some, uh, organizations and boards that I'm a part of that are just wonderful to me. Uh, ideas are heard, um, validated. Um, in particular, I, I feel like if I don't mention the Ward 3 Neighborhood Association, and I just want to say, you know, I remember the first time I went there because I was, you know, I had some issues and I wanted to know where I could talk. And um, I remember going there and I'm not going to say who was the president at the time, but I guess you could guess, uh, made the most welcoming speech and immediately then it was like, we may disagree with you. I mean, it was just the most welcoming thing that I was like, okay, all right, okay. I think I'll come a little bit more to this. Um, and since I have been on public housing, I have had, because I didn't know anyone, as a matter of fact, I'm just, up until I started serving, I met um, a fellow board member, I didn't know him. Uh, I have had to go other places 
and to learn about my job and my duties that I swore to. I think sometimes on boards, you defer to what the people are saying. If you have somebody who says, well, that's the law. Well, some people don't question it. I have always questioned things. If I go to a nice restaurant, it's very nice, but when I get the receipt, I'm gonna check it. Uh, and there are times I find errors in that. And the very fact that I was questioning, um, some people got offended by that. Like I should just be grateful that I'm on the board. Um, so I think that that was a little strange and I really searched around on my own. And this wasn't too difficulty, difficult because I grew up very impoverished and I didn't know anything about school. Only school I know about higher education were people who went to play sports. And I remember I would go around, I felt like Frederick Douglass, like uh, what's some learning you doing? Can you show me that I would just go around and I'd look and I'd ask and even though I was nervous and think I could, I asked and you know, I learned, I didn't, you know, didn't know there was government. I didn't know anything like that. So in one way, I feel like I'm repeating that. Whereas here, I'm like, what's going on? And I found some really great organizations that helped me in housing. But unfortunately, it's not here in this great progressive city of Northampton. It's uh, in the Boston area. Like there's a Mel King Institute. They sent me in for training, helped set us up in a uh, Airbnb had paid for this. I mean, that's where we have meetings and I would even say therapy groups online, you know, from alarm to calm and talking and communicating with other people, but not so much from here. I think I'm, and as a result of that, I think I'm the only board member who is one course shy of my National Association for Redevelopment and uh, Housing and Redevelopment uh, Certification. And that meant every Saturday, almost every Saturday from nine to noon, I was taking a course, luckily online. And I have to tell you, many of them were free. Uh, thank goodness. They recognize the resident board members. So I do appreciate that. I think I have taken, I think that's really great. But there are some things like a convention. And there are some people here, we've been to a convention. I went to, uh, someone paid my way for a delegate. So, but there are times when I went and said, guys, I'm going to this. It wasn't validated. It was almost blaming me, like, because I had to pay for my own way. I had to pay for everything here. And um, and I have to tell you, at one convention, I went to the Nairo convention. And I want to say about between 700 people. And I, I say that if I if you could see my face, I'd put my face right up to the camera and say, I was the only resident board a, a commissioner who paid for themselves. And other people, you know, came back and told the organization. I came back. I mean, I submitted before I went because I didn't know about it until I take this, took this class. And they said, of course, everybody goes. You have a professional development in your housing authority who pays for it. So I submitted it and said, no, I don't really see how this can help. And then when, you know, it, it, it came out like, I can't believe this is happening. And the optics, they're saying, well, we told her not to go and she went anyway. <laughs> like, this is the kind of stuff the mic, not even the microaggression. This is the type of slight that is, I'm trying to do everything I can because I'm for the resident housing and the citizens of Northampton. And it's an obstacle, one obstacle after the other. And I don't understand the hesitancy to, uh, to reward uh, people who are trying to learn more. It's not just sitting on a board rubber stamping everything. And I was still, in our handbook, we're told not to do that. And if you look at some of the histories around the state, people got in trouble. I'll speak about it, Chelsea, Chelsea Housing Authority. That's what they did. And I don't wanna vote on something that I don't know anything about. And so um, that's been just one challenge. And so uh, I'm staying on for the long term. Uh, I, I'm committed to it, but something like that, like the city needs to, and, and it's a hard thing if you grow up poor, you don't wanna, I know me, don't wanna ask anybody for some money so I can learn and do my job better. So I think people need to think about that. I don't know where people are gonna get money from, I, but that's the part is I live in a rich state. I mean, I live in a rich city that has wealth and knowledge all around, but I'm begging so I can learn my job better. And there's two other meetings coming up. One for the, I didn't even realize this until the last year, there is a Massachusetts Union of Public Housing Tenants. Now they're having a convention in two months. Uh, in like, what, I'd like, like to go. 30, 30 more That's it. No, I'm done. I'd like to go. So anyway, uh, thanks for letting me speak. Sorry. Don't worry about it. Thanks, Joella. Um, 
Excellent. Is there anybody else in the public that either has not spoken or that it's uh, wants to go a second time? Excellent. So I'm, one of the things that I'm going to do, I'm putting in the chat my uh, select committee email if people wants to get in touch uh, with me or um, with members, they can do it. Uh, just feel free to shoot us an email if you want to meet one to one. We have been one of the main conversations that we're having with our members is that has been that uh, one to ones are encouraged. People feel comfortable sort of sharing more sort of personal experiences uh, one to one. That's encouraged and permitted. Uh, if anybody wants to send us in the, if you think that we should be looking at something specific or there is a document that you would like to put bring to our attention, I would appreciate that uh, you can send it here to me and I can spread it uh, to the to the members of the select committee or you feel free to send it to the entire select committee. I just want to remind the select committee when that happens, please do not reply all. Just reply to the person that sent it saying thank you or um, it, with any follow-up, so we, we do not uh, violate open meeting law. Again, last time, uh, somebody who has not spoken or somebody who has not gone a second time. Excellent. Um, thank you so much, everybody. I uh, just want to remind you, this select committee meets the second and the fourth Tuesday of every month uh, from 7.30 to 9 p.m. Our charge is going to end in uh, April 15th. Um, and April 15th, we're going to be uh, submitting our final report to the mayor and the city council of Northampton. Um, thanks to all the members. Uh, our next meeting is going to be in you know, two weeks and a half, more or less. Um, I'm looking for a motion to adjourn. So we're closing the public comment event. Motion to adjourn. I will second that. Excellent. Motion to adjourn by Wen and second by Garrick. Uh, we're going to do roll call. Jamila? Yes. Garrick? Yes. Wen? Yes. Javier? Yes. And Cynthia absent. Um, we're ending this meeting. Thank you so much for the community members that give testimony Thanks, today. Feel free to reach out us. Thanks to City Council President Natch and City Council Vice President Foster for the support. And hopefully people are going to attend to our next meeting the second week, Tuesday at 7.30, the second week of April. Thank you so much.